key characteristics for an entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur are desire, drive, determination, and discipline. This is what Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam has described a successful entrepreneur. And how a successful entrepreneur becomes successful, we will discuss in this presentation. And I believe most of you are teachers, training professionals, technical professionals all over the country. These are today's challenges of training, giving the right kind of professionals, not only degree holders and diploma holders, but people who can withstand the global challenges in the industry. Today everything is global in the industry. Nothing is a region based or nothing is national based. Anything we discuss about education, about training people, and I think Mr. Kapil Sibyl is rightly on the job to see that Indians, become Indians have already earned a name. Globally, mostly people who are products of IITs and islands, but the dream of the country, dream of Dr. Manmohan Singh is that every person, every person living in rural areas, every foreign, far corner of the country should become a global professional. That's why I think your role is important and that's what we would like to discuss in this presentation. We'll talk of current business scenario, business strategies, survival, growth, profitability, environment, the concept of five P's as well as what ultimately creates customer delight. Current business scenario, I am not talking of the recession because I am not giving much cognizance to recession. Recession world over is a phenomenon which always comes after a few years of boom. This time it has been slightly more but I, the indications are there in America as well as other countries also that the recession is slowly getting wiped off. So that is a normal economic phenomenon so we don't do much on that. We are optimistic and we look for a greener future for the world economy that is an impact on Indian economy. Indian economy survived because of a domestic consumption within the country and the infrastructure development which is going on in the country compared to many other countries, European or America. So we have, we have been lucky. The basic thing is that what has got a revolution is the communication and info, info tech revolution all over the world. World has become a global village. The total world is said to be global village. You have a supplier at one end of the world, then you have a customer at other end of the world. Earlier we used to think of ancillarization. Indian concept still works on ancillaries across the industry where there are bulk industries situated. But today, Component which you buy from Korea, Taiwan may be much cheaper and better in quality compared to a component manufactured by ancillary which is next door. And it has happened in case of Punjab tractors here in Mohali. Punjab tractors had more than 200 ancillaries. Hardly 20 are surviving today because the rest of them, they could not withstand global competition. And same is the case everywhere in India. Liberalization of world economy, the WTO regime. More than 150 countries have signed the WTO agreement. Then the European formation of European Union. All that has globalized business. And India has a very good advantage because bulk of the companies come to India for getting their products outsourced. Reason being that compared to China, India has technology, India has quality, and India has now commitment to deliveries. Earlier India was not known 10 years back for commitment to deliveries, but India has improved on all fronts. So people abroad, they prefer <coughs> India as a destination for outsourcing compared to China, which is the most important competitor for India globally. China, although they give cheap goods in the world, but they are not assured of quality. But then China also is improving quality. I was last year in Beijing for a conference in an exhibition. I talked to the people, I said, why do we people are not giving quality? The guy, he, he gave a very good answer. He said, first we wanted to capture the world market. We have captured the world market with our cheap goods. <coughs> the world is after China. Then we had a problem, English language. We had invited 
institutes all over the world, mostly from UK for teaching English to our people in, in, in China. And in the next five years, people will be English literate, most of the people will be literate in English in China. And the third front which we are attacking now is quality. And within the next few years, our quality will be top in the world. That is how they are working. So we should not rest that China doesn't give quality, so we have an issue over that. We have also to upgrade our quality compared to China because they are a formidable customer, the competitor. The total business today is on cutting edge global competition. Total business. Unless one is globally competitive, nothing can happen. Earlier we had a regime of, you know, the budgetary support and things like that. Industry, Indian industry worked for long, long years on crutches. Crutches of subsidies, crutches of taxation benefits and big industrial groups like Birla's or Reliance and people like that, they used to dictate Indian budget. But now it is no more, it's all professionalized because we have to be competitive everywhere. What was business strategy yesterday? First produce and then sell. And manufacturer standard product, take the example of Ambassador Car. For 50 long years, Ambassador Car was the only vehicle in India. They never tried to upgrade technology. Technology changed long, long ago. Ambassador has been a fuel guzzler all over 50 years. Whereas engine technology became efficient in 50s, 60s, 70s, but they never upgraded. You can imagine how much foreign exchange country would have spent in importing extra petrol for running an ambassador car in Indian roads compared to what was available, the technology, what was the billions and billions of dollars. But then Maruti brought the revolution in mid-80s. Fuel efficient engines and fuel efficient car. After that, there is no looking back. Earlier, when we wanted to buy a vehicle, we would plan 10 years in advance, either we had to buy Ambassador or Fiat. There was nothing else. Now, after six months you want to buy a vehicle, you are not sure what particular brand or what particular price range would be available and in what particular future. So that is the change. So it was yesterday and today it is create market, customize the product. Dell computers known all over the world in one of their locations in China. They manufacture 80,000 computers and laptops in a day. And the, the delivery time anywhere, customized, minded, certain configurations, you need technical configurations, certain technical and commercial configurations, customized manufacturing 80,000 computers in one particular day. And the delivery time is just 48 hours anywhere in the world. That is how today's industry works. There is a sea change. So our people have to be equipped and trained to look for these kinds of challenges. How do you survive in business today? Excellent service to existing customers. The customer is the king or customer is the god. That is what we, we have been talking about. That is in Mahatma Gandhi talk that customer is the king, customer is god. He said customer is god. So serve me in the best possible manner. I just serve god. Because customer is our survival. Customer is our bread and butter. And your customers, our respected teachers, they are your students. If you deliver a satisfied lot of students, they will make sure that your name flies high all over the world. That is what is the importance of a teacher. We respect teachers quite a lot. Then next is zero defect quality. No compromise on quality. In North India, in North India beyond Delhi, these parts, the concept here is Jugaad. Jugaad to pata na sabko, especially in Ludhiana industry and all that. They just managed in this piece, 1920 managed. But in zero defect quality concept, there is no compromise on quality. It has to be 100% quality. Not even 99.9999%. A Japanese company, they got an order for auto components from USA. There are a number of examples, but we, have, we are short of time, so I will try to manage also and deal something what is happening in the world. You know the US, US company, they wrote in the order that they can accept 200 defective parts per million parts as per Six Sigma concept. Japanese company couldn't understand what that means. So what they did, they sent the million parts, whatever quantities were there, but ensured that 
They manufactured defective parts, 200 per million parts, because that was written in the country. They don't know much of English. And they supplied those 200 defective parts along with 1 million good parts to the American company. And when the Americans got the consignment, they saw that there are all the parts are okay, but there are 200 defective parts. So then the Japanese, they wrote to the Japanese, he said, why you have send us defective parts when you especially send us 1 million exact parts confirming to the quality. Then the Japanese investigated what had happened and they saw the contract. They had given them leverage to supply 200 effective parts in 1 million and they will pay for 1 million. And the Japanese told them, they said, look here, we are operating for last 30 years and in 30 years time we have not manufactured even a single defective part. Because they said you want 200 defective parts, we specially manufactured parts. So that is quality. That is what quality people are looking for. That is, that is the most important thing is quality for survival of it. Then one has to have each our competitor's price. We should be offering a better price compared to competitor's price. Later on we will discuss how we can do that. 100% committed delivery. Delivery in time. Indian business became famous only after we started giving good quality and committed deliveries. That's why outsourcing market is coming to India especially in pharma sector and auto component sector. Then economical and effective logistics. The Indian cost of logistics is still higher because of old drugs, infrastructure, bottlenecks and all that. Indian cost is 15% of the total GDP, Indian cost of logistics. Whereas American cost of logistics is only 10%. But Chinese is the highest cost, 19%, but they give you a better you know, they give you a better price so people don't mind. How they manage that, we don't know. In 19% GDP, maybe because of highly mass scale production and that kind of scales we have not achieved in India so far. Positive and responsive communication. You supply goods to a customer abroad or in India, but you don't send him invoice or you don't send him dispatch details. Or the customer asks you that there is some problem with the product with your goods, you don't respond. So you lose business. Positive communication is a very important aspect. You may be giving the best technology, best product, but if you don't communicate properly, you will lose business. Communication is very important, especially in this era of communication. Then how do you grow? Quick response to new customers. You get inquiries, you have to respond to them within 24 hours. If you don't respond to them within 24, there will be another competitor who will respond to them. Earlier we used to get sent letters by, you know, air mail. Now it is email. Next moment you receive it. So technology has revolutionized everything. So you know, customer is not here to wait. Ten years back, a project <coughs> in India costing maybe 500 crore rupees would take about 36 months. Almost one year was spent on getting government permissions and all. Today a 500 crore project takes just 12 months, even less than that. That is the change which technology has done. Every product, every industry, every business, they need some kind of sample. One has to be very fast in sample development. Sometimes companies, they take three months, four months, because they are not internally organized for sample development, so they lose business. Sample has to be developed in the shortest possible time. People have to be aware of this. People have to be trained that this is time. Time factor is very important in delivery. The active assistance in product application. <coughs> Person who manufactures a product and supplies to a customer has to give active assistance in application of the product. How you could use the product. Customers, sometimes the supplier comes, or we have seen where I work, luckily with large industries, the good suppliers, they would come to our workshop, plant, and give demonstration to our workers, not to the senior technical people, and all. they would put their engineers for days together, how to use the product and ensure that there is no wastage for it. That kind of service is needed nowadays. Effective customer contact. Once you supply the product, you get the money, that is not the end of the story. You have to maintain a relationship with the customer. Then only you, you, your growth is ensured. 
commitment to price. Nowadays, prices have to remain stable. We talk of buyer-seller partnership concern. We have less number of suppliers, more number of, you know, bigger volume of business. Maruti at one time had 650 suppliers. Two, two years back, they reduced them to about 150, the best of the best. And across the board, they got 5% discount on a purchase of 5,000 crores, two years, two and a half years back. That amounts to 300 crore piece straight sale because they gave volumes to the less number of suppliers under buyer seller concern. And they are very happy with that. So, commitment to prices and short qualities and short deliveries and short. And you should not think of localized market. You may start business with a localized market, but you should always think if we have to grow and sustain in business, regional market, national market, and the global market. Everything has to be global nowadays for survival and growth. How you get profitability? In the earlier business scenario, profits used to be added 10%, 15%, 25%, depending on what kind of industry you are, whether there is competition, like the Birlas giving you car for 50 long years, no competition, whatever price they wanted to charge, you charge. Now it is no more like that. So, you know, the how you get profitability, you don't get by adding to your cost any profit margin. You get profitability by drastic reduction in rejection when you manufacture. There is no except, you know, there are wastage levels are given in costing 10%, 5%, nothing is acceptable against wastage. There has not a, the most product manufacturer has to be right first time. It has to be right first time. It cannot be reprocessed or processed several times because you lose money in that. Minimizing wastage of all kinds, scrap, wastage of time, wastage of energy, everything. And energy conservation is another area where you can get profit in business. For example, we are using so many number of lights here in this Whether these lights are necessary or we can use half the lights where we make a thing, the same applies to the industry also. Cost effective buying, whatever you buy should be cost effective. We are talking of competitive I said earlier, if a particular product is available in Korea or Taiwan, much cheaper compared to your supply next door, you should go there and buy from there. <coughs> Not that it should be restricted to your next door supply. Cost effective finance, low cost, low interest. You have to look for low cost interest. There is a lot of competition in financial business today, even with public sector banks. They got variable interest rates, so you should try to park in the rest. Then the human productivity. In an eight hour time which is scheduled in the industry, how much time we waste or how much time we spend on actual working, that's very important. Human productivity is very important. But human productivity cannot be achieved just like you switch on the machine. The human being has to be given the right kind of environment, the right kind of motivation. Then only human beings work. Otherwise, human being has lot of potential Positive potential as well as negative potential. Positive potential to work, give productivity, negative pot potential to going for invisible losses and wastages. If an employee or worker is not motivated, he can create havoc in the industry. What kind of environment should be there? We always talk of very healthy environment in industry. <coughs> Manufacturing efficiency should be there on top. Productivity should be there on top. Waste control should be maximum and technology has to be updated. Technology life today is not more than six months. Every six months there is a change in technology. See your mobile phones, how these mobile phone technology changing. See your computers, see your, I am talking of people who use day to day things. I am not talking of industrial technology which is expanding, which is changing very fast. You see your TVs, now you get the TV as thin as a photo frame. So things like that, technology has changed. When color TV came to India in Asian games, I think in 1983 or 84, the ordinary set was costing about 40,000 rupees imported. So today's same set is costing 6,000 rupees after 2025. That is a change in technology, which we can imagine. <coughs> then the soft skills. People are very important. I give a lot of emphasis for people. The logistics. Just in time concept for everything. Getting your materials, making production, delivering, 
even human productivity has to be just in time, keeping up your targets, statistical quality analysis, SQA, for everything, whatever you do, analyze and where you can make improvements. Benchmarking. Then systems, what kind of systems you operate upon and how you should work. What kind of a culture, it should be very healthy culture, internal culture and external culture. Internal culture within the organization, a healthy human institution and the external culture with the customers, with the government, with your environment, with your neighbors, it has to be very healthy. Positive culture, negativity is a no place today if you want to go. What is the five key concept? <coughs> People, premises, plant, process and product. This covers total industrial operations. People, premises, plant, process and product. People are writing, I repeat here. People, premises, plant, process and product. What is people? People start with an organization. You have to have right kind of organization and organization size and structure depends on the kind of business you have to operate upon. It's not necessary that every organization should have five or ten vice presidents. If the size demands only vice, one vice president, that is enough. So it depends on what is your size of business and what is your size of organization. But the thrust has to be on lean organization. Make optimum usage of people who are around and make optimum usage of people whom you recruit. Lean organization concept. Recruitment has to be the right person for the right job, the right age group, right experience, <coughs> right qualification, right blend of everything. Maybe the localized people, international people, national people, they will have a blend of all the kinds of things. Ratio between men and women. Women are equally good today <coughs> in industrial operations or any difficult operation. In industry or even in defense, women are in the forefront. So equally divide and in industry we have seen women give more productivity compared to men. Women waste less time except unless it is a government opposition where they take their meeting material and all in care. But in industry it is not like that. The, the productivity of women is very good at all levels compared to men. So right kind of recruitment and right kind of training Degree or diploma is not enough. You have to give the orientation to suit the industrial environment. Lots of industries have full-fledged training organizations, training operations. You would have seen day before yesterday, Sonia Gandhi inaugurated a beautiful campus of Infosys in Mysore. Must have seen in TV. It's all on American White House design, with President Obama's residence. It's all on that design. A beautiful campus. That is the kind of emphasis people give on training. Last in February, they have got their training institute in Donawala. That is the that is much better than Harvard. They have copied Harvard concept, but it's much better than Harvard. That's the kind of emphasis which is given to training. Motorola, they spend on every one dollar of training they spend on employees. They derive extra five dollars of productivity from. They have done studies and analyzed it. Training is very important. And training has to be upgraded always. A 20 years experience today becomes redundant. It becomes zero overnight. Maybe earlier days used to have one particular note for teaching and use it year after year, year after year. Today you might have changed your teaching habit. You have to upgrade your knowledge. Most of you must know. Earlier maybe 20 years syllabus would not change. Things would not change. The note would not change. To get trampled in your pocket, but save more details. But now, now there is no more like that. Skills upgradation is very important. In skills upgradation, most important thing is change management. How you change the human mind to adopt to the new changes. You always have to have a blend of old people and new people. In the industry, when Birla's when wanted change management in the young MBAs, they had a problem with all the people who had started with GD Birla. And they would they were highly respected people, but they had risen from the ranks. How to maintain balance between those new MBAs and GD Birla time people? They, they were able to do that by balancing 
giving them some of their voluntary packages, appointing some of their relations, and making the, making the change through young MBAs and young trained people. So the change management concept is very important. And in change management, most important thing is that I must change first before I introduce change to my people. If I tell my team members, subordinates to change and I don't change and I don't learn, then the change management concept doesn't take place. I must change first. That's very important. Ultimately, the institution, the organization has to be a human institution. Just like one family, we talk of family concept. Organization should be one large family. You know, that's how we talk of that. When we talk of human institution. Everybody has to be endeared, right from a worker, right from a peer, right after the chairman, everybody has to be endeared. In Italy, I went to a plant with the managing director of the company. And I was surprised, that was my new experience of that kind of interaction. The guy knew everybody's name, first name in the shop room. And when he, while he was showing me the plant, he was shaking hands with everyone. All these workers, hi John, hi Tommy, hi Tom, someone, and they were also addressing me in the first person, chairman of the company, mind you. That is the kind of human institution one should build. Here in India, if somebody salutes as worker, we don't even nod our head. So we have to change those habits. We have to change those habits. And all ultimately the human organization it adds value to the shareholder. The premises. The layout of the premises, housekeeping, cleanliness culture, healthy environment, safety aspects while you design premises. Plus, another resource crunch today we have on premises is that land availability has shrunk. Earlier land used to be available. Industry would be allotted where 20 acres are needed, 100 acres of land because land was not, nowadays land is not available because of massive infrastructure growth. Plus the politics which is you know, involved in getting land acquired from villagers and all that. You must have seen Tata shifting his plan to Gujarat and the kind of drama which was created, all political drama. So those kinds of things were the case. But still, let me tell you, the ratio between industry and agriculture, ideal ratio should be 50-50. But India today has only around 30% industry and 70% agriculture. So we have got lot of scope to convert arid lands and agricultural lands to industry, lot of scope, but provided our politics allows us to do it. National Highway is the present, the rate of completion is 2.5 kilometers per day, whereas it should be 16 kilometers. Why it is so? Because all land acquisitions are under litigation. And politicians have vested interests, everybody has. Nation is not progressing that. So land is a very important aspect when the premises are to be design, land, environment, safety. Plant has to be the best of the best. Equipment, layout, utilities, quality assurance system, everything has to be right, most viable and most cost effective. That is, that is how it has to be developed. Process has to be, one is product, in process I include everything, not only product process. Product process has to be best. In chemical industry, earlier the input cost used to be around 80% of the total cost. Today, technologies have changed, input cost has come down in most of the chemical industry from 80% to 50 to 60%. That is all the technology has changed and upgraded. So, you have to have best of the best processes, and as I told you, the product life cycle is very short. Processes also have to be upgraded. Similarly, systems, technical systems, commercial systems, SOPs, financial systems have to be absolutely updated and world class standards. Now these systems there is no hard and fast rule. It again depends on industry to industry, the size of the industry. ISO and DIS can only give you guidelines. Technical knowledge can give you guidelines, but you have to see what is best for your own localized environment and your own customer needs. World class standards should be adopted, not your local standards or Indian standards. DIS standards are in many, many cases, they are much lower compared to world standards. In Rambexi, we used to adopt US FDA standards, then, you know, British Pharma or Indian Pharma, IP or BP, but we used to adopt US FDA standards, 
which were the highest in the world in pharmaceutical industry. That's why Rambaxi has been so successful so far and has the world in activity. Then business strategies have to be sound business strategies. The strategy which you would have made 10 years back may not be valid again. You will have to operate your strategies to survive and grow. Product, right quality, right marketing concepts. You have to develop the right kind of brand image, right supply chains, buying, storage, logistics, right packaging, right customer service. We talked about customer communication and all that. <coughs> and what ultimately creates customer delight? Customer is of two kinds. One is your external customer who whom you sell your product. Second is the customer, your own organization. That is your bosses and all that. Or your subordinates, you have to give guidance to your subordinates, he is your customer as long as he needs your guidance. He has to be very successful. Third customer is your nation, your government. You have to be endearing to your rules, regulations and environment friendliness, safety and number of other things. Healthy profitability, healthy business, long term sustained growth, customer relationship management, happiness and prosperity to shareholders, investors, customers, employees, the government and the nation. They are all customers in one way or the other. All these aspects create the customer growth. And if you follow the earlier process which we have discussed thoroughly, and if you imbibe those values to your students, definitely they will make a name in their respective professions or whatever they Now I would like to give you a pictorial view of it. This is a plant. This looks like a garden, as you see. This is a plant of TVS group in Pondicherry, manufacturing components for mostly for exports to General Motors and TVS was the first company in India to get Deming Award and Balraj Award, most prestigious quality awards. And TVS is the first company in India which has been supplying radiator caps to General Motors for last 10 years without any rejection, not a single piece of rejection. And couple of years back, General Motors all over the world gave a directive to all their plants that radiator caps have to be bought only from TBS in India and they are the sole suppliers of radiator caps to General Motors plants all over the world. That is why quality, technology and your customer relationship comes. This TBS also is like Japanese company who supplied for 30 years error free, error free products to the customers. This is just like a picnic spot. This looks like a garden. This is the image of a modern plant. The Jugadi plant which mostly in north we have down north, this side. Those things cannot, those things have to be surpassed. Those things cannot. Thank you very much for a patient hearing, and if you have any questions, please refer to me.